Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I have kind of a fun video that I haven't done for a little bit and that is a pattern review. All right, so a few weeks ago, um, the Pattern Preacher reached out to me about trying, it was a new to me pattern company, about trying one of their patterns and then doing, if I'd mind doing a review on the blog or on the vlog, whatever this is. <laughs> on the channel <laughs> and I said I would love to I looked at some of her designs I think she has six right now maybe seven um, of different patterns so let's say maybe it's on here actually and um, printed and I think she also has PDF anyway um, I said I would love to so I picked the Olivia dress which is this dress right here which is a dress well, we'll talk about the pattern a little bit more but I picked this one and um, she sent it my way and I got it made up and I really really love it so let's talk a little bit about the pattern and then I will show you um, footage of me actually in it here in just a minute and I'll show you the dress obviously too Okay, so this is the Olivia, and it is, um, obviously, it's more of a summery type dress. I think it's supposed to be, but I'm totally going to use this as a transitional piece, obviously, for fall. So this is considered adventurous beginner. It's got a really um, floaty sleeve, a nice, it, this hits below the knee, but I didn't touch the skirt at all, um, so it hits me more midi length, which I love. I think it's perfect for fall. Um, it suggests using <clears throat> polyester crepe, po cotton satin, poly viscose. Um, crepe de chine, viscose, rayon, satin, shintung. Oh, shintung would be interesting. Poplin and lightweight velvets, which would also be very interesting. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's kind of, it's for lighter, floatier fabrics, obviously. Here's the line drawings here. The front panel has this beautiful sheared waist. Um, the back is just in the front, but it gives the most beautiful shaping. And then the bust shaping is here in these gathers. Um, so there's uh, the back pieces kind of go around to create like a, a yoke, kind of. You know, you know, you've seen patterns where they kind of come over the front. And then very similar to the um, Rhapsody, Love Notions Rhapsody, where it just kind of comes over. And then the front gathers into that and all the bust shaping is there. So if you do need to do a full bust adjustment, um, it's just a matter of adding more width there. Um, you know, rotating your dart up into that and then just having a little bit more gathers. Um, and then it's got a very forgiving waist because this shearing panel pulls it all in to make a very flattering silhouette. Um, there are back darts in the back of the skirt and then it's got a pretty full skirt there at the bottom with the invisible zipper up the center back. So a pretty, um, oh, v-neck. It's got a v-neck. So a pretty simple construction. Um, again, it's for adventurous beginners. She has um, all sorts of, it's a beautiful pattern. Um, Actually, here, let's pull out this little book. So this is the um, book Ooh. that goes along with the pattern. Um, and I loved it in this dark floral. That's kind of like, oh, I can totally make that work for um, for fall. Uh, it looks like she's got right now six patterns. So there is on the back a list of, I mean, a pictures of all of her patterns. Her instructions are wonderful. She gives you instructions on how to finish this with um, French seams. Um, it's a smaller size range. So she goes from a UK 6 to a UK 20. It's a UK um, brand. Um, so it is a small size range. I made the size US 10, size UK 14, um, based on my measurements. Um, actually, the, that size is for a, let's see, what is it? A 38 inch bust. My bust is actually 39 inches, uh, but I knew there was quite a bit of ease. She has the finished measurements listed in here, which are 42.2, and I knew that would be enough ease for me without having to do a full bust adjustment. Um, so I decided to make that mostly because my waist, the waist for that um, size is a 32 and hips 41.5. The hip doesn't really, I mean, this is a full skirt, so it doesn't really matter what the hip is. Um, but I knew that that was probably, I, I do have a 32 inch waist. So I'm like, I'll just go ahead and make that size and um, then I won't have to do a full bust adjustment and we'll just see how it goes. Now, looking back, it's fine. It fits fine. I think though, making this again, um, which I think making it for summer or spring would be a whole lot of fun. Doing it in an eyelet would be absolutely gorgeous. That'd be beautiful. Like an eyelet, cotton voile, lawn type combination it would be beautiful. Um, like a little eyelet or like a, a border eyelet or something. Oh my gosh, that'd be so pretty. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry, I digress. Um, I think I, I will go down a size next time. Um, and then do a full bust adjustment. I think I would need the full bust adjustment if I did go down one size. Um, so the next size down is for a 36 inch bust, which is actually what my upper bust is, um, which technically I probably should have done and then just 
done the full bust adjustment. So this does come off my shoulders a little bit. It's just a little big through the neckline. Not awful because it is supposed to be loose and flowy on the top. So, I mean, it's not awful. But yeah, if I were making it again, I think that I would probably go down um, a size. So, um, wonderful instructions, beautiful illustrations on the inside. Um, I had zero issues with the fitting other than um, I probably should have just made one size smaller because everything else fit really well, which is what, um, oopsie, the shearing panel um, in the front does beautifully. Let's see, the pattern also includes this beautiful little booklet, which is just a, um, a glossary of terms, and she talks about... Uh, all sorts of things like how to do French seams and this probably comes in all of them different um, it's just really pretty different um, tools and stuff <laughs> equipment and all that kind of thing that you might need um, it's just yeah it's just a really pretty package and then the pattern itself comes printed on the heavier paper let me pull out one of the so I, I did I traced this off so it comes on like the heavier paper, um, all the sizes, uh, very nice, very similar to like Megan Nielsen's patterns is what it reminded me of. Um, anyway, very beautiful, very nice pattern, um, kind of like Tilly, Tilly does it on the, the, Tilly and the buttons, they do it on the heavier paper too. So really beautiful pattern, all in all. Okay, let's talk about the dress, I dropped my hanger. All right, so I used this wonderful rayon poplin that I thrifted not that long ago. So if you follow along on the um, daily vlogs, you'll see, sitting on it, you'll see that I did um, a thrift haul, oh, not that long ago, or did I do a separate video? I can't really remember. I think I just did it in the weekly vlog. Um, but I had thrifted this um, two and a half yards of this rayon poplin. And it is perfect for this dress. So a rayon poplin is a little thicker than a chalet, so it's not as shifty as a chalet. Um, but it still has the beautiful drape that rayons have. Um, it's very easy to take care of. This one actually does not wrinkle badly at all. Um, it's pretty wonderful. I did have to do a burn test on it because it was thrifted. Um, I've got a little narrow hem at the bottom. Now, this pattern actually comes with uh, facings. And I normally try and steer away from facings um, like the plague. I just prefer a lined bodice. However, making this dress again, I will totally use the facings. Lining this because the front uses this sheer panel. So you attach the shearing to the front and then, so the bottom of the shearing panel is the waist bottom of the back. So, and I didn't want to line the sheared panel because then that, you know, it, it takes away that cinched in effect if you get too bulky. So it's kind of a mess on the inside. I was, I was lining like totally off the cuff. Um, I did use this beautiful um, China silk. This is the same China silk that I got um, inherited from my mentor Joyce that um, I lined my couture skirt, the pencil skirt that we did at the beginning of the year, which seems like forever ago. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, a nice narrow hem on the sleeves, so these nice, beautiful, floaty sleeves. Um, again, it's a little big in the shoulders and in the body for me, but it's not awful because just because of the nature of the dress. So beautiful and floaty. I'll show you the inside. There's a gorgeous um, zipper in there. So I had to do like a stair step effect, basically. So here, I'll just turn the whole thing inside out. back, you know, it was fine. I just, you know, it, I hand stitched it down to the waist seam. However, when you get to the front, because <laughs> of that sheared panel, you have to do like a stair step because I didn't want that. I didn't want to have to do lining in that sheared panel. So then I hand stitched it down to the sheared panel, but this top piece gets pulled in with the shearing as well. So I was like having to constantly stretch the shearing in order to hand stitch this down. It was a bit of a nightmare. And then, yeah, then obviously they've got that all. So I should have just followed the directions and just done facings. That would have been fine. But I didn't. So this took me quite a bit longer than it should have. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. So follow the instructions. Use the facings. Anyway, I love this dress. Um, I didn't make any uh, fitting adjustments because I didn't need to for the bust. 
Um, again, I'll go down a size next time and maybe do a little bit of a narrow shoulder adjustment uh, going down a size. Um, I will use the facings next time, like the instructions tell you to. But other than that, I mean, you, again, it's just such an easy thing to fit because it uses the elastic, but a sheared panel, so it's not like your normal elastic waists, which is so very on trend. And I just love the shearing. Obviously, you guys know that I'm just such a sucker for that shearing right now. It's just so interesting and so fun. So yeah, and I love this fabric for that. I think that it worked perfectly. I had just enough. Um, and I, again, I didn't even shorten the skirt on this because I wanted it more midi, so I just left it as is because uh, the pattern has this hitting right below the knee, and I love it with my new boots. So yes, I'm very pleased um, with the finish of this, of this uh, dress, and yeah, I found another lovely uh, new-to-me pattern company. So I will leave links down to the dress and the... Um, you know, obviously the pattern company as well down below. Um, I was gifted the pattern, but that, that's it. That all opinions are my own. It was my own fabric, own materials. Um, but yes, I was gifted the pattern in exchange for a pattern review. Just so you guys know, all opinions are my own. <laughs> um, okay, I think that that's all I've got for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. A fun little pattern review, something a little different um, that we haven't done for a while. Uh, Sunday we've got part six of the uh, Sew Along that's coming up. And what are we doing? Collar. Collar and collar stand are Sunday. Um, I filmed this so long ago I'm trying to remember <laughs> steps. And then next week we will finish it up with all the finishing details, buttonholes, buttons, um, hem, all that kind of stuff. So we are getting close to the end of the shirt dress sew along so I hope you guys have been enjoying that. And then Tuesday I will be showcasing my bottoms for my module. They are both finished and I love them both. So I'm very excited to share those with you guys as well on Tuesday. All right, guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. The thumbs up if you like these type of videos. It helps me plan what I'm going to be putting up. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and are able to get some sewing in, and I will see you guys on Sunday. Bye!